What's up, y'all? Today, I'm bringing you guys a clip from the JS Academy. This is a VOD review we did with one of our gold uh, auction main clients. Now, this guy, he's an absolute beast, and this is one of the most valuable VODs, I think, we've done in the Academy this week. It was super, super valuable because we talked about a lot of concepts. We talked about a lot of general concepts that apply to a lot of people. And we also talked about how to review the situations and how to take value out of your games. So I hope you guys appreciate this VOD. If you guys want to check out the JS Academy, it's a group coaching platform where we do VOD reviews, 1v1 practice, drill practice, uh, and lectures all hosted by me in my Discord. Check that out at patreon.com slash JS Academy. Links will be in the description. I hope you guys enjoy the VOD. Enjoy it. Peace. It's kind of the usual. I win my lane. Some stupid shit happens and I lose the game. Okay. <laughs> and in this case, I think, I, because I tried to review this one, mm -hmm. I think it's because I got greedy on plates. Okay. But I don't know. Because I, that's kind of the reason why I brought this one. I, I really need a second opinion on this one. I, I'm really tutored just for remembering this. Okay. Oh my goodness, she is playing with fire. I mean, all the damage is before one minute, so technically she can just reset, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. Usually you don't want to reset past like 53 seconds mid lane, because the minions just get there so early. Yeah, so since we reset, walk should be down XP, probably? No, we were in XP range. Never you mind. missed like one minion, right? No, we were in XP range for that. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for the XP only. I, I didn't care. That's why I trade. Yeah, and this is huge. And actually, if you can keep this frozen now, that's what you should do, right? You shouldn't even go, go for this one auto attack trade, right? You should wait for her to step up. Right, again, actually for the reason Night Shadow brought up, this is another champion that really likes to wait for her level three power spike before she starts playing the game. So if she pushes on accident, you can keep it frozen and she's permanently denied until you can set up a nice all in, right? So if an assassin, whether it's Akali, whether it's Kiana, whether it's Fizz, accidentally pushes into you, you should let them push and freeze because they will regret it. Where if you take this trade, you're pushing the wave really, really hard and denying yourself a nice all-in opportunity. Hmm, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, hit space bar, please. Holy. Do we talk about, do we, do we talk about camera control uh, in our live games? Uh... Somewhat, yes. You said that I, I miss the E uh, a lot because I, I tend to not play lock screen, right? So yeah, I play lock screen it, during yeah, the, I remember now. This is the this is kind of the exact same thing. This is really awkward because you don't uh, you don't hit spacebar, right? You stand in one spot. If you were able to kite forward, you would have been able to do this a lot more naturally. Everything about this would have been cleaner. The movement, the kiting, the auto attacks, if you just tap spacebar once, right? So getting into that habit of just tapping spacebar, it will make your mechanics 10 times better for, for pretty much no effort. Mm. Yeah, I can try that. I... Like you would not have... In particular, I have a, a, a kind of an excuse because I was looking for the jungle as well. I was expecting to get ganked here because I'm always ganked. So I was like, "Ah, oh, yes, when, staring when here for the jungler." So true. Also, the jungler's yeah. literally on vision. So let's. Like, yeah. So, so that's why you see there. I'm perfect angle for Eve to get out. Holy. And then I can. But you if know, you hit spacebar, your ease easier, and then you'll never miss the direction. Right, like your your camera here is like actually crazy, crazy, crazy. Look at all of this real estate on just useless information, right? Even if you are looking for the jungler, this is just crazy, crazy, okay. crazy, crazy. And then it makes this like really, really lucky. Yeah, I, sh I should try that space bar more for sure. That I don't have that habit habit anyway. Yeah, that'll be a really nice mechanic to add in. It'll make so much of what you do just smoother yeah i might need to break that drill for that mm -hmm. yeah the scuttle crab drill is really nice for it 
It's where you kind of just go into practice tool, find the scuttles, and then kite with it. And then like in between auto attacks, just get used to like hitting space bar or at, in between every other auto attack, maybe just kind of oh, scuttle okay. is nice because it will run, run away from you. So you practice moving and then autoing and then uh, the camera. So that's, that's what I recommend if you're going to go drill it in. Again, this is a spot where if you, if you last hit slower, right, rather than killing these minions right now, then you will main, you'll create the freeze harder and then she'll have to step up into you. You effectively make the lane longer, right? You stretch the lane out, which allows you to all in her easier. You kind of increase your threat range. We're here, you're like walking minions into her. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, this, this is awkward, especially when there's nowhere to roam. Unless you're thinking about diving bottom, but I haven't seen you look once, so I don't think that's a play. And but what I remember about I was considering here. that, but uh, because the support's not there, I was just waiting for the jungle, yeah. And I nearly can kill him here. Oh, oh my goodness, nice. Him. That's crazy. And the BM in all chat. I'll take it. I like it. I hate when people type in team chat, especially if it's BM, but I love BM in all chat. I think it's great. I think it adds some color to the game. Again, you have a freeze here and she's behind resources, right? So this is like a winning position and you can force a situation where if you have a freeze, you say, look, Akali, you're going to lose this entire wave and after a minute or two, I'm just going to be up five waves on you and this game's over, right? Or you're going to die, right? Because you're going to step up and I'm just going to kill you for this. You can force that. But if you push this, you no longer are able to force this situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think I need to practice that. Like, I, I, I never do that. And now yeah. that's just that. So freezing, especially against these, these champions that you are beating, is a super good way to turn a winning position into a lead in material in the 1v1, right? Because, okay, so right now, let's just kind of get some terms down. We're in a winning position, right? You have wave control, winning position. You have wave control, you're up a level, you're up items, um, you're up resources, you're up everything, right? So now we have I a couple have of choices. A question. This is this matchup is like Katarina, right? If I let her lose, she would just roam around. No. 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 Akali plays much different. Her roams are much much weaker. Weaker. Um, but Akali scales a lot better, and she side lanes and one v ones a lot better. So Katarina and oh. Silas, like Katarina is more like Silas, uh, where Akali is a little bit more like Cassidin. That's maybe a little bit of a stretch. She, she's a little bit more like Echo. Uh, these guys are both a little bit like Cassidy. But yeah, if you if you freeze on them and deny them waves and they just coin flip roam, that's winning for sure against these guys. Right? The chance of them winning through coin flipping, it's so, so low. Um, where Katarina and Silas, it's a different story because that's all they want to do in the first place. Right? Um, does, th do, does that make sense? So you don't, um, you don't actually need to deny her roams. It's because her win condition isn't roaming. It's it's scaling plus kind of dueling, right? She she really likes to duel. She she really likes to side lane. That's another that's another like win condition these guys have. She likes to scale. She likes to duel. She likes to side lane. Where Katarina and Silas don't. They don't do any of those things, right? They suck at dueling. They suck at all ins. They suck at scaling. All they want to do is fight a skirmish, right? They don't really want to side lane with people. I mean, they can with some of these mages, but they mostly just want to take big old 3v3s and 5v5s and hit R and kill everybody, right? So that's the biggest difference there. Um, but okay, so here we're in a winning position. Now, you have a couple of options to kind of snowball here effectively. You have the team play where you shove and roam. Team 
in here, let me just write this so it doesn't look so bad. Shove plus roam. Now, the pros to this is that we get team ahead, right? Um, take good roams. The cons are that we walk CS plus scaling into Akali for free, right? Those are the pros and the cons of the team play. Where if we want to snowball in the 1v1, right, the 1v1, what you would do here is we would freeze into all in. Pros, we make sure Akali falls really behind, right? She's not going to get any XP for free. She's not going to get any CS for free. She probably is going to die again, right? Cons, we don't get to take roams. So how do we know which option is better? How do we know if we want to play for the team and shove in a roam? Or how do we know if we want to snowball the 1v1? What do you guys think? Will we win to 1v1? Well, most cases, like if you have this question, most cases you win the 1v1. Like, like, yeah, that's part of it. But if we're asking this question, we're assuming, yes, we win the 1v1. We're assuming both of these are winning lines, but which one is more winning? Which one I wins the hardest? The team, personally, I'm playing for the 1v1 though. Yeah. I usually go for the team because that's like the champion identity of action. Because of W, I went to Rome and uh, scary people, you know, with my E and all that stuff. So yeah, it's kind of a tricky question. And I like the way that you guys answered it. One of you said team, one of you said one, one. two year old, do you have something to add? Uh, yeah, I think the only thing I would say is it depends on if you want a team fight or split push late game. Uh, like. we're not so worried about late game yet, but I like how you guys answered it. It's like, yes, sometimes the 1v1 is good. Yes, sometimes team is good. Yes, it's champion dependent. Auction does want to roam more than a Yone does. So Auction will play for the team more than Yone will, right? Beautiful. Champion identity is part of it. So here, I'm just going to write that up here. What's another part of it? Champ identity. Like the game state. I can't roam if Beautiful. I don't have any opportunity. That's opportunity. really, really good. Exactly. Game state is like the rest of the puzzle, right? So the question is, is there anywhere to roam, right? So if we look at this game and we see kind of Rengar going bottom, and here, let's go back to when you had the opportunity, when you had the question, where you see your bot is pushing up and you see Rengar's bottom, is there anywhere to roam here? No, that's kind of the reason why I'm, why I'm not looking. Yeah, no, it, absolutely not, right? So if there is no team play, can we take it? Yeah, no. No, right? So in this situation, we have to freeze. Right? We just have to. Um, not freezing here is really, really, really troll. Right? Because you're in this really big winning position, but we don't actually gain any material. Because if you're playing to shove and roam, you're just going to let her scale for free while you get nothing. Right? Playing for the team here is actually a net losing play. Right? Does that does that make sense? Yeah. So, I said a lot of words. Um, and that was just to make sure the idea was thorough. But basically, if you want to snowball the 1v1, you freeze. If you want to roam, you shove and roam. If you have no roam, you can't shove and roam. You just freeze here. Right? We just gotta, gotta, gotta freeze here. And, and snowball. It's actually... This is a question that Ari is faced with all the time, right? And even like the higher level Ari mains, you see them uh, debating about like, uh, you know, maxing Q or maxing W or whatnot. You guys have to go through the exact same kind of thought process to come to an answer, right? If you think there's going to be a lot of good roam opportunities, you have to max Q. But if you're okay with freezing and poking and trading and 1v1ing, then it makes more sense to max W and freeze, right? Rather than shove and roam. This stuff is super, super important. It's partially champion identity and it's partially game state. Okay, um, maybe I have a question here. How do I transition as soon as the game state change? Because I, I know at some point an opportunity will come. Yep. And I should be ready for that. But 
Even though I play action, I kind of have a hard time usually to change a freeze into a shove. Yeah, so usually it has to happen smooth or like, yeah, we want to make it as smooth as possible. Um, it requires this kind of term I've been using recently called playing in the future. And this is a term I've been using for Shibi, our, our diamond Lux, Lux main. And this is a term that I actually heard from one of my old coaches growing up playing sports saying that like the more you can understand what's going to happen in the future the more primed you can be the easier everything is it's kind of the same thing right if you know you have to 1v1 now the next question is when will you have a realm opportunity right so well let's look at this game if your bot's going to push like this and your rengar is going to recall when do you think the next realm will be pop? well is not where but show? when oh uh like Minute minute and a half, two minutes. And why? Because think about what's happening here. Jin's coming out of base. Rengar's finishing is clear. Like, what's going to happen next? What's Elise going to do? Wave's eventually going to push to you. Yep, Elise is off tempo. We have a freeze. This wave is going to bounce back, right? Elise mm. is going to back. What's Rengar going to do? He just finished all his camps. He's going to go back as well. Rengar's going to back. So when he comes up out of base, where's he gonna go? I wish drag. <laughs> um, <laughs> I well, don't know. This guy says random. It, it, well, by that time, his top side camps will be up. No? Yeah. So you just look at his camps, right? Um, if he's paying attention, he'll probably go rap, uh, Raptors up. If he's not paying attention, he'll probably go Wolves down. Either way. That's your next Roma opportunity when he's finishing his next clear, right? Which, yeah, will be, I don't know, a like minute to 90 seconds. It's somewhere in there. It's not going to take him two minutes to full clear again um, yeah. out of base. It's going to be a minute, 90 seconds, especially because he's going to skip a camp. He doesn't have buffs. Like, it's it's going to take yeah, 60 yeah. to 90 seconds, right? Um, so we know right now that in about two to three waves, you'll want to start your slow push. Well, actually, in two, three waves, you want to roam. So that means in one to two waves, you'll want to start your slow push. Again, this is a lot of words, and you don't have time to kind of go through this thought process in the moment. This is, uh, this is what game sense is. Have you guys ever heard this term, like game sense? Yeah. Um, literally, what this is, is understanding when you need to transition through ideas, right? So playing in the future is a way to describe good game sense. The more you can understand what's going to happen next, the more game sense you, you, you have, the easier you know to when and how to transition smoothly. So the biggest thing you can do to work on your game sense is really strive to always, always, always be asking what's next, right? Like a drill that I took from LS that really, really helped me with my game sense was he said, okay, wave A is the wave in your face, right? And now the exercise is for, you know, however many games, it's, it's more of like a learning objective that you can apply, right? The learning objective is once you go into the game, you're going to always know what can happen on wave B and what that means can happen on wave C, right? So you're going to have like two or three options on wave B and then you're going to have two or three options for each of those options. You're going to have like, uh, I don't know, somewhere between like four to 12 options over here. Right. And if you're pushing your brain to always be thinking about these things, that's how you kind of develop this game sense. Okay. So that's like that, uh, turn a knowledge that we had the other day. Right. But here we are thinking like two or three turns are ahead. Right? Exactly. We're thinking turns ahead. That that's a really, really good way to put it. And that's a good way to build on that old analogy. Beautiful. Yep. Good game sense is being able to think a couple of turns ahead. So, step one um, in this situation is to understand we have to freeze, right? Step one, we have to freeze. Step two, we have to know when to break the freeze, right? <laughs> Which, this, this involves thinking ahead, when will the next opportunity be, right? If wave A is frozen, 
will happen on wave B? How will that impact wave C, right? Now, this is an advanced drill. Um, so I'm not recommending you kind of go into your games thinking about this quite yet. The most important thing is we recognize uh, there's nowhere to go. And when there's nowhere to go, you freeze, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, but I kind of, in this example, for example, I, I take uh, two turns in order to make it a freeze, right? Because I have this wave, I have the building momentum, the next wave. This one is actually uh, two and a half. You can the... freeze. Hmm. The turn you analogy know, is getting tricky. Because uh, when we're using turns to describe plays you leave for, you're not leaving, right? So it, it, there's no turns, right? You have the freeze right now. You would need a turn to leave, so you need to break the freeze to buy it, to get a turn. But you don't need a turn to freeze, if that makes sense. Okay. What should I think in order to create this freeze then? Should I just last feed? Or should yeah. I think like, hey, I need to hit the casters and then uh, on the second next wave uh, i do something yeah so the rule for oh. freezing is you keep as many minions as you can hold it, it's really that simple so if you know that um into a kali you can comfortably hold five casters you just let that her have five casters you trim up everything else and beautiful that's that's freezing and again that requires some feeling as you play more and as you try it out more you'll start to get a better feeling for how many you can hold comfortably all the time you may try to freeze and realize the wave is too big and she just crashes it on your head and you're like oh i need to freeze a little less or you may accidentally start a slow push and you'll say oh i um i need to have more minions right to freeze but that's that's yeah. the thought process however many you could comfortably hold yeah, so I I guess I don't do that often here because I don't know the limit how many I should have, I guess. Usually top and bot is easy, like I just need three. And it, when I try to freeze mid, I, I go for three as well, but uh, I always freeze as a defensive mechanism, not as an offensive one. Yeah, that's kind of backwards, but either way, like... Freezing is easy. You never want to trim it down. Like there's this misconception because everybody sees those graphs, right? Those graphs where it's like, oh, here you need uh, zero minions to freeze. And here you need uh, negative uh, one and it will freeze. And here you need like negative two, right? Everybody sees these graphs yeah. and thinks these are the minions you need to meet. Those are the minimum you need to meet. So that means if you have more than that, that's actually a good thing because it's more easy to hold, right? So everybody in top lane is like, oh, I need my four casters and freeze right on this line. It's like, no, no, no. If you can hold more than four, you damn well hold more than four because it's easier to hold and then you could put it more where you want, right? So the general rule should be hold as many as you can comfortably. The minimums for mid lane, and here, I can even draw it out for you guys. This would be a good picture to draw. Find this in jungle pet terms. <laughs> If big caster minion, easy gank. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if the wave's in the middle, you don't actually need any, and we're, we're going to assume we're trying to freeze this way, right? So we're trying to maintain the freeze like right on this line. This black line is as pretty much as close as you can hold it to your tower where the melee minions meet, right? So you'd have to have the melee minions crash here. And here, you need eh, three to four. You probably need four minions to freeze this comfortably. Maybe three full health minions. You could mid-max it, but we'll just say four for simplicity's sake. Right? You need four extra minions to freeze here. If you want to pull it back to the bush, it's more like three. If you want to pull it somewhere in the middle, let's use yellow. It's more like two. And in the middle, of course, it's just some sort of lead. Right? If you have like one minion advantage, or even if you have health advantage, it's enough to push back towards you, right? Now, the beautiful part about this is it actually gets mirrored on the opposite side. So let's say you want to freeze and you actually have three extra minions. And actually, I'm going to trim these numbers down. Uh, no, that's actually fine. Three extra minions right up on their tower, 
it'll come back to you, right? So you can have three extra minions and it could still be a freeze. It will just take time for it to actually come back, right? Does that make sense? So that's why I'm writing negative here. That means you would actually have the minion advantage. I have one question though, like freezing on the negative two and negative three lines there, like, mm -hmm. isn't that in like, when would you ever want, when would you ever want to hold a freeze there? Because aren't you just asking for the enemy? Well, no, you would never freeze? hold the freeze there, but let's say you want to start a freeze and you have oh. a wave where you have two extra minions. Now the question is, do you crash that wave or do you freeze it right now? Well, if you freeze it right now, it gets to a better spot faster, right? Got it. They're so just because it, you sense. have a minion advantage doesn't mean you have to crash it. That's the Got key. It. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, and that's the mistake I do, right? Because I'm so eager to go and kill them again that I just uh, kill the wave, try to hit them, and then yeah, I, exactly. I'm making things really slow. Mm -hmm. Minions just wipe my monitor freeze. because I thought that pink line was a blood stain or something. Like <laughs> oh my god, this this one? I, yeah, I did the same. My bad. My pen like brushing <laughs> it as I dropped it. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna take a little screenshot and this is a nice little, uh, here you go guys, I'll erase it. <laughs> Thank you, <Holy laughs> nice, nice little, uh, nice little diagram. I'm gonna put this in resources because this is, this is a helpful little diagram. Now, again, this is minimum and I'm actually gonna add the word minimum. Uh, asterisk, minimum. And the reason it's important to say minimum is because, again, if you can hold more than these, you will, right? Again, this is another uh, top lane misconception where top laners are always like, I gotta have my four caster minions. I'm gonna trim it down perfectly. And it's like, no, you're gonna fuck up your freeze, right? Like, if you can hold more, do that. Okay, we got like really sidetracked. So let's kind of speed through this a little bit. Yeah, so we are just slowly letting her scale. Slowly but surely, Akali is coming back into this game. And, of course, we're roaming to nowhere again. Maybe even about to get collapsed on. Yeah, like here, this is another beautiful freeze opportunity. And all now what you do when you freeze is anytime she has a minion she wants to go up for, you kind of line up with it, create this nice little triangle, and then boom, drop the hammer. So I should treat uh, the minions like my support, right? On the bot lane? Uh, sort of, feet. sort of. This is more just like a general concept. When you're trying to punish somebody going for this minion, yeah, you always try to create a triangle and line up with them. And that's yeah. how you kind of really punish them for this minion. <laughs> yeah, like if you know she's, she's going for these ones, you would stand kind of online so that when she steps up, you you cut her off and kill her. Yeah, you see when I freeze, I I even you're fucking the change. freeze. There's no freeze anymore. Yeah, yeah, because I was feeling uncomfortable, like when she pushed me. Yeah. So the biggest thing is um, stand because you're standing in a passive spot, right? The aggressive spot to stand here is wherever she's at. And here, let's go back like one more touch. Okay, so let's say she's here going for this minion. You would stand on this line or this line if you prefer. You would just line up with this and create this nice little triangle, right? Does that make sense? This little pattern. And I only do that because I, I'm winning, right? Yeah, so because you're I trying to force interaction. That's how you force the whole, hey, I'm going to freeze and you're either going to be down a bunch of CS or I'm going to kill you. Right? That's how you do that. On every single minion, you say, hey, this minion is, an, is a choice, Akali. You can take the minion, but you are going to lose 40% of your health. Right? If you don't take the minion, I am up more income. Right? So you just stand in a spot that facilitates that kind of question. Does that make sense? Is that like the triangle determined by, like your character's effective range uh no it's determined by where they're at and just lining up with the minion right so let's say for some reason a collie was here and the minion's here now the triangle is more like this right and you just stand on either of those so it's always like right next to it yeah yep gotcha um 
And it's because you're waiting for them to walk into you. So you kind of have range advantage no matter what, because they'll have to run away, assuming you're stronger. Gotcha, okay. And this is an idea. A, a lot of people call it minion negotiation. That's how you really force the negotiation to happen on every minion. Yeah, I realize I've been doing it wrong like, this whole time. I, I stand like too far away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you stand too far back or too far away. Going in. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. It takes away your, uh, a lot of your agency. It takes away your options, right? It makes you walk in more linear lines, makes you more predictable. It denies the choice. A really good position is a position where no matter what they do, they lose. Right, and that's an opportunity to force that. But here again, we push and we get nothing for pushing here, right? We just did, we just let Akali scale some more. Yeah, I was hoping to get drag, but uh, I don't know, my jungle doesn't like drag. Right? Even if we get dragon, like it's not worth a ton. I mean, it's not useless, but it's not worth a ton. So I should just freeze and farm forever. Like here, I was like nine CS, right? Yeah, yep. The issue is she is only one level behind you, I think, where you should be like three levels up. You should make sure she has less than 40 farm okay, because, so because there's no opportunity, right? If there was good, like that top roam, that's fine. Okay. But Akali is opened up to go bottom here. So you should probably ping that. Yeah, it's no wonder your bot's getting ganked. You should know that's gonna happen. And this is just, this yeah. is, this is just uh, like macro 101. If you guys make a play top and this is your strong side, they are going to make a play on your weak side. Ping them to be, like ping them. Ping them danger, ping them recall, ping them back. Yeah, and I kind of knew it because I tried to crash the wave. This mm -hmm. is one of the situations that I talked about, like transition between a slow push and a fast and a crash, so not always mm -hmm. that fast. But yeah, I completely didn't think, so that completely on me. But I think this is the moment that I fucked up, like really fucked up, that I thought, at least. Maybe I did more bad stuff because of the freeze, but uh, yeah. Mm. So here, I thought she was alone. No, I mean, you I... know there. Wait, there's no way you think she's alone. Yeah, that's what went on my head. Okay, if you think they're alone after they make a play bottom, that's just, we're not paying attention. Right? Okay. Like, they they literally all walk on vision towards you for a long time. Right? And they even ping it. Like, a lot. It's not they were going they to even type it. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's and so, staying here is fine. That's true. You just have to be ready to leave. And she weren't ready to go. Right? As soon as you see the second person, you just need to sprint up. Yeah, that's what I gotta do here. But it's First, too late already. Yeah. Yep. Personally, I'm flashing for the caning if I'm a dino. Yeah, that's what I thought I should do here. But uh, I was like, I, 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 maybe I was too cocky. I don't know. I th thought, hey, Akali, free food. And then suddenly Sejuani comes and, uh, oh no, I'm going to die. And she goes all in and I lose. <laughs> yeah. And ironically, you want to really 2v1, bad. sir. Um, and that's, cl well, the issue is it's not a 2v1. It's a 1v4. They're all you don't even that easily. Yeah. <laughs> Texione does for sure. Yes, there is easily. For sure. Easy. My lease is crashed. for sure. <laughs> um, holy. Yeah, and, and that's like game throwing. So we've been slowly letting her scale, and boom, she collects that shutdown. She's going to be very hard to deal with. Our team's not that far ahead. Uh, Akali is now back in the game. That play is really bad. Mostly because like staying for the plate is okay. I, I don't have an issue with it because what you're doing here is you're saying, hey, if you guys take dragon, I'm gonna at least get something, right? Yeah, that's what's what I thought. But if you stop them from taking dragon, what do we ha have to be ready to do? Get up. Yeah, run like hell, right? You gotta be. You have to put yourself in a very safe spot. You have to be leaning like here. You have to be leaning like here, and then the second you see Sejuani. 
You have to be gone. Right, yeah, like, so like now, food. right now that Akali's here, you should be just chilling here and, and playing a little bit more careful. You're like, okay, if they're not on Dragon, um, yeah. And now that Sejuani's here, you just need to just get away, and we mess up our E, which is really bad. Yeah. So you just overstay. It's fine to stay here. You just you weren't primed for what was gonna happen. The whole point of staying is saying, hey, if you guys pull people off Dragon, I'm going to slow you guys down. You just have to be ready to go if they call you on it, right? Does that make sense? Like, the play is fine. It was just executed poorly. Because I would stay yeah. for this plate too. But I would know that uh, if anybody shows, I'm in trouble. I think that's the difference. Like, I anybody but Akali... I was, I, yeah. I would leave, but because she shows up first, you, you see, like, I, I saw her. I, They're I just still the pinging, by the way. They're still pinging. Yeah. Like, your team has pinged for you 90 times. <laughs> I'm 1v2 there, unironically. Holy. I didn't you know buy me. that fight because of the, you know, I don't, I don't know where they rest are. No way at least dies to that ignite. Ooh. Yes. That was yeah, a very valid really minion though. Plus 14 goldis. And here I'm just uh I don't know. It's exactly the same thing, but instead of Akali it's a Samir. I'm one v two in that too. And now dying here again is just it's just GG. And again, you see Sejuani's is coming. Just eating into the Samira was troll. Because again, we see the Samira. This to me looks like map awareness more than anything. Right? Like yeah, look I look at this. See. You see her for a long time. But did you see her? You know what I mean? I even put that word there. Yeah. But the thing is, as soon as I saw Samira, I got blind. Like I don't care about that word anymore. Yeah. I just want to cure her. Um, That's exactly what happened. Holy. Okay. <laughs> so things things to talk about. We talked about freezing. Um, freezing. If there are no good roams, this is the best way to snowball. Right? If you have no good map plays. Uh, another, yeah, yeah, I'll phrase this another way. If there are no good map plays, this snowballs your lane the best all right snowballs your lane the best no matter what and you just know that's correct um oh my goodness if there's no ropes right so if we were able to freeze we would have made sure akali can't come in the game quite as easily the second thing is just map awareness slash macro i haven't seen this from you a ton so I don't know if today was just different or if this is our next step. We'll have to see in the next VOD. But yeah, uh, it def looks like we didn't look at map, right? For sure, we were just like not paying attention. Um, we should know when and why to look at map based off of map play, right? So if you know that they could go to Dragon and they just had four bot and they succeed in killing bottom, they're going to walk to dragon or to you, right? And you have to be ready to deal with that. Um, if your team's in base, you also have to be in base. If you don't, if people are off the map and you don't know where they're at, right? Nice calls this counting heads. You have to know that, you know, there's nobody, you're in big danger. Um, Is it okay to leave a freeze for a free? because of this kind of situation is it okay to leave a freeze yeah yes if you have four people mid of course right yeah anything is but okay. if i don't know it could be mid it could be drag like in that case but in that case right. you wait until people show and then you slow down right so like let's say you're playing a hundred percent aggressive and then a collie shows and you're like ah okay 75 percent aggressive 
right? You're gonna save your cooldowns, you're gonna save whatnot. And then Sojrani shows you run like hell, right? That's kind of the progression, if that makes sense. Back to 100% 2v1. Holy. Um, yeah. Because you know you cannot fight. Like that has to be the, the foundation of everything you do. We cannot fight. Because if somebody shows, there's going to be another one. Um, and that should be the foundation of that idea just because of how the map is, is going. Okay. And last little thing I'm going to add in here as just kind of like a miscellaneous is please, please start hitting spacebar. <laughs> our mechanics will, will 10x. Our mouse accuracy, our cursor control, our E mechanics, everything will be way better. Okay, any yeah. other questions from this game? Mm, no, so basically you would do the same, but your transition between 100 and 0 aggressive would be smoother. Yeah, like the second you see a caller, you have to be, oh, hey, they didn't all decide to do dragon, right? And okay. you're, that has to be kind of a red flag uh, in your brain. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that flag doesn't exist. Right. I thought she was coming back for for the wave and whatever, like uh, they are doing the dragon, but no. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Um. Yeah. And so staying here, it is an advanced play, because if we just look at like fundamentals, fundamentals. Your bait, your your bot died, and your jungle is about to go back, so you should also recall. And this is a cannon right so like by basic normie standards i don't know like a better way to put that um very very rudimentarily very basically this is a really really good back timer now you can press the fundamentals by being creative here by knowing that you can try to delay the dragon by applying pressure here and know that it's risky and you have to have an escape route right so I'm okay with staying here, and I would have, but you have to kind of have that in the back of your brain. If you didn't have that in the back of your brain, then we need to understand the map better. Does that make sense? Yeah, I kind of had that, but again, like I saw Kali and just shut my head off. <laughs> right, right. So the biggest takeaway then, what's the biggest takeaway? I need to respect the opponent. Thing. Yeah, exactly. In this situation, when you go bend those rules, a Kali may be showing up for a different reason than we think. We have to respect her way more, right? Okay. When we're making a risky play, we have to respect things we normally wouldn't. Way, way harder. Way, way harder. Okay. Beautiful.